Hello, I'm Kamla. My guests today are filmmaker Alison Reed and the subject of her film, Anne in his Dag. The name of the film is The Woman Who Loves Giraffes. Here's a clip from the film and then we'll talk to both of them about how Alison discovered Anne and they talked about giraffes and why Anne was rediscovered by the whole world in the 21st century when her work actually took place in the 1950s in Africa. In Stockholm, number three, is the giraffe monogamous? Does a male giraffe look around at the lady giraffes or does he settle down? Uh, uh, no, he's not monogamous. He's not monogamous. This gets good. Oh, <laughs> Take your ballots and mark them, if you will, please, for number one, number two, or number three. Anne actually went to South Africa to begin her studies of giraffe before Jane Goodall got to Africa to study the chimpanzees. She wasn't only a pioneering scientist looking at animals in the wild, but she was fighting all kinds of odds as a woman. It takes an explorer's heart to be willing to set off like that, to go and study animals in Africa in the 1950s as a single woman traveling the continent herself in her little rickety car. This was a different world then. There wasn't the infrastructure, there were no mobile phones, there was nothing. She did the groundbreaking stuff. But ironically, um, it has slipped under the radar and doesn't attract the attention that she deserves. I voted for number one. Well, I voted for number one. Well, I voted for number one as well. I voted for number one. I think she looks like the scholarly type. Let's find out at once which one of these ladies, in truth, is the giraffe expert. Will the real and Dag please stand up? Welcome to San Francisco, both of you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having us. So the name of the film, like I said, is The Woman Who Loves Giraffes. Now, for 83 years, you've loved giraffes. Right. Do you still remember the first day you saw the giraffe as a three-year-old? Yes, yes, I think I do. I've seen the picture quite often, though, so perhaps I'm thinking about that. But I remember looking up and thinking, this is a, a wonderful animal. I've got to know more about it. How was it that you thought about it as a wonderful animal? Because many of us have seen giraffes either, you know, as, uh, in the zoo or somewhere else, but we've never developed an abiding interest in it. Yes, it does make you wonder. I'm not sure why, and, and at the age of three, it's <laughs> rather strange, but it, that's exactly what happened. But it's, a, it's funny how many people do connect with giraffes, though. Like, we, as we've been traveling on the film, we've had so many people come up to Anne and say, giraffes are my favorite animal. So, <laughs> Yeah, but there, are, there isn't much information about them. You You're know? absolutely right. They, giraffes have, in many respects, been flying under the radar. And what's interesting to me is that, you know, the grand dam of giraffe science has also been flying under the radar. I mean, everyone knows about Jane Goodall, um, but people are just starting to become aware of Anne now. And, uh, you know, Anne was doing her work in Africa, you know, a few years before, for, before Goodall was there. In fact, uh, as far as we can discover, I think Anne was the first person to study an African a animal in the wild. Yes, and that's what the film is about. Yeah. So, switching back to you, Anne, what was fascinating is even more than the giraffe is the love that your mother lavished on you and the unconditional love that she exhibited towards you. How did that shape you? How has that shaped you and helped you as you went through your journey where you were denied a tenureship in a university after completing a PhD. So I just want to find out about your mother. <laughs> well, my mother was an amazing person. She wrote all sort of books and she did wrote many, she wrote probably more than a hundred articles that were published in Canadian wide journals and in America as well. So um, I guess I always looked up to her and thought she was an amazing woman. And then uh, for some reason, when I went to her and saw the uh, Chicago zoo, which I did when I was three. I was um, smitten. <laughs> I've got a book called Smitten. Oh, you've written a book called <laughs> by, Smitten? By giraffe, yes. Okay. okay. So, okay. Uh, so that was just a wonderful moment and I guess somehow it um, changed my life. Because in the movie, uh, I, in the, the movie that Alison has shot, uh, when you're 22, uh, you have a boyfriend and uh, you want to go to Africa to study the giraffe. And your boyfriend says, let's get married. And you turn to your mother and she says, Anne, you've always wanted to study giraffe. Why don't you go to Africa and do that? This is in the 1950s. And I'm thinking, how many mothers would say that to their daughter? <laughs> go out to Africa. 
<laughs> that to uh, South Africa where apartheid was just starting. Right. So that's why I'm curious to know what else can you tell us about your mother because she seems like a very fascinating mm -hmm. person. Um, well, she became de uh, dean, of, or, uh, dean of Women, actually, at the University College at the University of Toronto. So she was really remarkable. And her job was to look after maybe a thousand girls or women who were working at the university. And uh, so she did that for nine years and uh, just before I came, uh, before I went and before I came back. It's so, it was so uh, wonderful to have all the letters that Anne wrote to her mother during the time she was in Africa. And the relationship between the two of them really comes across. So we've got all the letters that Anne wrote her mom and all the letters that her mom wrote Anne. And you can tell that uh, Mary Quayle Innes um, was terrified. Like, she was like, Anne, I know you're okay because you have courage and intelligence uh, enough for anything, but please let me know if you need any money. money I'm willing yes. to send it to you. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can tell she was the wind beneath, you know, uh, Anne's wings, but yes. she was also worried. And you couldn't pick up a phone and say, are you okay? It right? took this weeks <laughs> to, to um, have contact. Yeah. You know, what was interesting is you mentioned Jane Goodall. So there are some parallels. One is you wrote to Professor Leakey and you said he declined. You wrote your nice letters. But in the case of Jane Goodall, her mother accompanied her <laughs> yes, to Africa. Right. But in your case, you went on your own. <laughs> and I was like, and, and the little car, what did you call it? A Camelo. Camelo. That's I thought you, it was named after me. <laughs> 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 well, no, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so, so uh, when you came back from Africa, you decided to get married and then d do a PhD. Yes. Yeah. What was your PhD on? It was on <clears throat> the uh, um, the movements of giraffe while it's galloping when it's walking, compared to all the other large ungulate animals that are similar. Okay. So and it was one, I was desperate not to hurt an animal, but I was a zoologist, so I had to deal with an animal. So this way I could just use a lot of footage that I'd taken while I was actually <laughs> in Africa. And that is unusual too. Did you get to see that footage that oh she shot? Oh my goodness, yes. I mean, Anne, while Anne was in South Africa, the rancher who she was staying with, uh, Alexander Matthew, had a 16 millimeter Bolex camera and he lent it to Anne, so Anne was able to fi take film footage of these giraffes, and then he picked up the camera and he shot her studying the giraffes. <laughs> so it's just a wealth of information. Um, in is, is that all available? Well, it, it's in the, yes, we have it. I've digitized all that film, and uh, we use a lot of it in the film yes. to compare. Um, you know, we were lucky enough to film Anne back in South Africa, back at Fleur de Lis, where she did those studies like over half a century ago. So we were able to see the 23-year-old Anne and, and Anne as the 80-something-year-old Anne um, in those same places. And it's, it was so cool to see what's changed and what hasn't changed. What is ironic is you come from a family where your father was a very well-known political economist. He is sometimes uh, described as an original thinker in yes. Canada. Yes foundation you know he looked at the foundational industries and so research was in the air your mother helped him write his books she wasn't given too much credit but she continued on having come from that kind of a background and stock what was it like when you didn't get your tenureship talk to us about that because well, uh, yeah that was devastating because as, as as far as i knew if you worked really hard and did what you should and uh, and everything went well, you would assume that you'd climb ahead, but then the universities would just say, well, no, you're a woman, so it doesn't matter what you've done. Really? Yeah. Actually, and there were three universities in the area, and, and I worked at all of them. But this they, is in Toronto? No, um, in Waterloo, okay. near Waterloo. Okay. What was the university that denied, what was the name of the university? That university denied? of Waterloo, okay. and then uh, Wilfrid, oh, Wilfrid Laurier University. Okay. And Guelph. And the University of Guelph. Yeah. Okay. Can you share with us why University of Guelph, where you were teaching, denied you the tenureship? Because you w went back and revisited two of the committee members. Yes. So do you, do you still remember well, that? Well, I think that it just because I was a woman, there was really no other. I had more, I had more research um, efforts than he had, actually, and I had more books written than he did. But could you fight back? Could you write? Could you... Uh, list it and say this is what I have done. Couldn't you prove? Oh, evidence? He, knew, he knew that because he had that all on record. But he, he didn't want women there, so 
And he also asked me if I would be willing to help work with um, marine mammals. And the operations he did often were awful for the animals, and they might um, kill them in the end. And I said, no, I would not have so anything So there was to do an with ethical it. problem. Yeah. So I, if I'd said yes, I'm sure I would have stayed. But I said I want to go off and carry on my own research, but which is what men did. Yeah. But you did fight. I mean, when Anne, Anne got that letter, um, she was horrified because it didn't occur to her that she wouldn't get tenure because she had an excellent teaching record. She was, as she says, more published than most professors at that time. I mean, her she was doing this groundbreaking work, so she was being published in, in scientific, refereed scientific journals around the world. So it just didn't occur to her that she wasn't going to get tenure. So she did fight. I mean, she asked the uh, Promotions and Tenure Committee to list the reasons why she, they weren't giving her tenure, and then she gave them the facts, which, which um, were counter to what they were saying. And they backed off a little bit. They said, okay, um, originally they said you had to leave the university in yeah. 18 months. They weren't giving you tenure. And then they backed off and said, well, we'll let you teach for longer and we'll make the tenure decision Just later. after one year. So she did fight, but uh, she, she knew she wasn't going to get anywhere. Yeah, so isn't that interesting that even though she provided evidence and there was written documentation and everything, that fact didn't matter, opinion mattered. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it matters that you're a woman. I mean, how could that be so, so stupid when, it, when you've th done things in writing and you can read it and, and it isn't stupid? And, thank and yet. Thankfully, that's changing. I mean, what, what happened... What no, has but it impacted her and that's the oh, thing yes. that in the movie, it was so troubling to see that such an accomplished uh, human being and researcher was not allowed to. I mean, I have tears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did too. Lots of people have that reaction in the film. They, um, we, both men and women. I think men, men particularly, actually, because I think they feel uh, the, equally as sick about what happened to, to Anne. And they come up after the film and, and have a very similar re reaction to the one you're having right now. So after that, you went back to the Human Rights Commission of Ontario and tried fighting the case, right. but didn't win that one either. No. So then, this was the big jolt, as you write in one of your unpublished essays, that nobody's born an activist. You become an activist when you have a big jolt and there's a change in your life. Oh, I'm so glad you read that because, you no, know what, I don't think anyone else in the world, it never got published. And I it think doesn't matter a, if it's published or not, but I think you got to the distilled essence of why somebody becomes an activist. You know, you say the small changes only change your behavior, but to become an activist, you need a big jolt where you're, you're jolted out of, out of your comfortable lifestyle. And then you can, and you're thinking about it and you can't stop thinking about it, that this is unfair, which was the case in... Yeah, I think in your case, because you came from an academia kind of a yeah, background. Well, perhaps that's right. I hadn't thought of that. And, and I knew how th these things worked because my father worked there, my yes. brother worked there. Yeah, and I think that's why you knew that there was a path, whereas others would have just given up and retreated, which is what you discovered, that there were other women who had faced this discrimination. Right. Yes, yes, that, 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 that's, um, that's great. Well, you know, you became an activist <laughs> because you had seen your parents be in the university side, your brother, you know, your family. Yes. So for you to have been singled out must have been difficult for you. Oh, yes, very much so. Especially when you've done path-breaking work. And it didn't occur to Anne that she couldn't do, you know, what her, what her family was doing. As you say, her mother, her, her father, her Brother, brothers, yeah. yeah, her husband. Yeah. Like they were all on this career path, so Anne, of course, assumed she would be on the same path. So I think it was even more devastating to her when she realized that wasn't going to happen. So then you became a feminist. You said you're a feminist by... In Intuitively, well, I think uh, instinctively, I also, yes. Well, I was a feminist, cause then, but I, I really am a feminist now because I think it's just so wrong what happens to them sometimes. What is your definition of being a feminist? Uh, I guess it's a person. I like to think it's a person that is is um, treated at the same as a man. So gender shouldn't go. No, I th no, yeah. Uh, not that we should be better, but that we should be given a fair chance. Okay. So if you're assigned a task, it doesn't matter whether you're a male or a female. Yeah. The task can be completed as long as they're capable of it. Yeah. That seems to make sense to me. Okay. And, and to all women. 
and you were not given that uh, no. opportunity. <laughs> no. How has your life changed because then you retreated from your giraffe uh, research and for 50 years you were doing other things, yes. you know, uh, until the dawn of the 21st century, literally, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, what do, how did you keep yourself going you know that's one thing i wanted to find out how did you keep yourself going because well i continued to do things so and i wrote a, i wrote a number of books one of which you read and then you started a publishing small publishing. yeah and then i and, and I, when i was working at guelph i met some students who were really keen to work with me and and then after i left we continued to work together and write books you discovered her story through a radio program a radio pro uh, program that was on the canadian radio yeah and when i found out about Anne's story it spoke to me so much i mean why did it speak to you because your uh, other films were Baby Formula and other things, right? Yes, yes. This is my first documentary, and I didn't intend to make a documentary. I, when I first approached Anne, because her story spoke to me so much. Right. I mean, an adventurous woman going to Africa by herself, uh, <laughs> you know, who loves animals, who is not is not phased by whatever obstacles are in her path. She just found a way to do what she wanted to do, no matter what what was. Um, what she was faced with. So that is really inspiring to me. So I approached Anne and asked her if she would give me the rights to her book and to her life story to make a scripted film with actors about her story because I, I was thinking gorillas in the mist, you know, out of Africa, that sort of a film. And she was kind enough to say yes. So um, I was in the process of developing that when I found out she was going back to Africa for the first time in well over half a century. And I thought, this is historic. It needs to be recorded. So I asked her if I could tag along and uh, scramble and got a you know a, a small crew to defer their fees and go with me and uh, oh they deferred their fees yes because we had no financing she was going in a month so there was very <laughs> little time to to get everything together so we um, we we just scrambled and, and followed her to, uh, to Kenya and then followed her to South Africa and followed her back to the Brookfield <laughs> Zoo uh, as uh, I you know I ended up shooting her for over five years and the story oh, five um, years kept kept evolving kept revealing itself uh, to us as as we went so who knew that um, the Brookfield Zoo in Chicago was going to have a giraffe conference and and all these giraffe scientists were going to honor Anne with a, a, an excellence in giraffe science award. So we got to go back to the place where she fell in love with giraffes as well. It was quite a, quite a ride, eh? <laughs> yeah, th th that was actually quite touching to see you wear your daughter. Now, the interesting thing, Alison, is thanks to you, we get to see that her daughter didn't know that her mother had done all this path-breaking work. So it looks like even your family, your children were surprised. Uh, yeah, I guess they were. I, I didn't really think about it, but... So you pushed it at the back of your mind once? I guess I must, must have. Well, I mean, you can't think about it forever, and, and it was, I couldn't see any future with anything I'd done, so I just kept on writing books and articles about other things. It and then I did get part-time jobs at university, so I really loved teaching and talking to students. I just want to ask you, how come you didn't become cynical? I don't know. I was. It was lucky I didn't. Although was I cynical when? when I think you were maybe pissed a bit? off. Yeah. That is no. That is different. <laughs> that is different from yes. being cynical yes. and kind of blaming the world. Yes. For uh, yeah. So I don't think I did become cynical. What, I'm what not saved sure why, you? I, I just want to know what was. Why do you think you didn't become cynical? Well, I think because I were, when I was writing these other books and articles, people would would say, "Oh, this is really good," and then publish it. And so I was thinking, "Well, I can't be that bad." But then. Of course, Guelph thought I was that bad, and so did the other universities. It's what I thought, but really they were thinking, you're a woman. <laughs> I want to go back to you, Alison, because what was interesting is you go back and revisit two of the committee members from the tenure, who were part of the tenure committee, or whatever the right word is. And I guess, was one of them the head of the tenure committee? Yes, yes. Why did he decide to talk to you and he doesn't seem to have changed his mind after yeah, all these years? Yeah, that was interesting because so much time has passed and had passed when I interviewed him, and decades, and you know, attitudes have changed mm. and so I wanted to go into that interview with a, an open mind, thinking that, you know, thinking has changed over the decades, undeniably. So perhaps his thinking has too. So perhaps I should give him the benefit of the doubt. So I went in, 
you know, speaking to him about, you know, his work, about the department, like he, that the department was just starting. So he was the first Dean of Biological Sciences. So he was picking the people that he wanted to surround himself with. And I said, what are the qualities that, uh, that you were looking for? And, you know, he, he was telling me and I asked him what he thought of Jane Goodall. And he said, oh, she was fantastic. And he had met Jane. And I said, what, what was it about Jane that you liked so much? And he said, well, she was this single woman who went to Africa and did this work, you know. And I was like, well, you're <laughs> describing Anne. Like, why, why couldn't you see that? So it, it was interesting that his thinking hadn't evolved. Like, he's very, very, um, set in his in his ways and um and it's funny the other person who was on the tenure committee sandy middleton oh. he was the youngest uh, on that committee and he was the only one that voted in Anne's favor so so the dean was the ringleader and and i think people were expected to toe the line and vote as he was voting and sandy couldn't understand that because he he saw the value in it in Anne's work. So um, so he was the only person that voted that she should get tenure, and of course he was he was overruled. Could the difference be that in the case of Jane Goodall, she got a lot of publicity, and her, yes, and her first husband was a well-known photographer. Oh, and and that uh, yeah, National Geographic was behind them, so there was there was money, there was leaky, there was yes, Do you and, think and and also primates. I mean. You know, you can, primates are so much like we are, and I think that uh, people love seeing that interaction, uh, which is, of course, not very scientific. Like Anne's, Anne's uh, coming at things from a scientific background, so she thinks you should stand yeah, back and were, not interfere yeah. with the animals at all. <laughs> yes, I saw that yes. because when, I think one of the days you said when you were observing them, you started doing ballet uh, <laughs> moves. Yeah. And they started moving towards you and you ran into your car. Yeah, and that was the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, uh, so you wanted to observe them in their surroundings. Well, you'd have to if you want to have any, a credible finding because you could, anything that if you interact with them, then of course it's going to change how they behave. So to my mind, um, Jane Goodall really wasn't doing all the wonderful things people said, but she did a lot of good things. Yeah, well, she's, she has said that she, she, she learned not to interact with yeah, them after a while. So she, yeah. she, I mean, everyone goes through their own process. I can't believe even your socks has giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't have enough. <laughs> what does it feel because you were denied these opportunities you could have helped so many of them discover their love for yes. giraffes and other subjects had you been tenured yes but even without having been tenured you ended up influencing so many people that you weren't aware of yes it's been it's just been magnificent really because I you know I meet people I wouldn't have ever seen before and they'd say you, you made a difference to my life when I heard about what you've done and oh it was magnificent so That's maybe one of the happiest things that ended up, you know, talking to people that could then go off and do things on their own and get the confidence to do them. So do you feel a little better that yes, have, have yes, been? Yes, definitely. Okay. I feel much happier since I met Ali. <laughs> so are you re-engaged with the uh, community of researchers? Yes, yes, do, yes, it's do, wonderful. Do you help them in any way? No, usually I'm just provide, well, um, providing possible things that don't work but I'm not cutting edge right now, so. She was rediscovered and part of it goes to folks from the Bay Area. Yes. There were folks in the Bay Area that, were, that wanted to track her down and find out what she is doing, where she is, so that they could uh, recognize her. Yes. Uh, so talk to us about those folks. Yeah, so a woman named Amy Phelps and a woman named Lisa Clifton Bumpus, who are both in the film, um, are giraffe enthusiasts from and the Bay Area? From the Bay Area, and they they uh, they have had affiliations with uh, both the Oakland Zoo and the San Francisco Zoo and the Happy Hollow Zoo. Okay. And um, at a time when giraffes were declining, um, and it was starting to become known that they needed help, they were looking for an icon, some a, a spokesperson to help with 
with conservation. And they immediately thought of Anne because Anne wrote the textbook that is known as the Bible of Giraffes that affected so many giraffe scientists. So, and they, but they didn't know Anne because she'd been absent from the scene for so long. And they thought, I wonder if she's still around. So they did a little research and they tracked Anne down. So, um, and then they invited Anne to a conference and gave her an award. So um, uh, they're, they're traveling with us. They attend these film festivals with us and uh, it's part of their, a significant part of the happy story. So what is it like for you to interact with young students and those who are in high school and oh, primary I, school? Oh, I love it. That's what I'd rather do than anything, really. Because if you can get them inspired, then they'll do something that will be good. And, and uh, it'll, uh, yes, I, I love it. So what would you like people to remember you by? Uh, I think probably by my research in all the areas I research, but and they primarily are? about draft. The areas of research are not only giraffe, but also... Yes, well, everything I've done, I like to think is very important, or, or I like to think, or I wouldn't have done it probably. But there are all sorts of things that you realize are wrong and uh, that I've worked at during my life and hope that they'll look the same in the future. That was wonderful to do as well, to think that you could make a difference in women's lives and then they'd be excited that somebody, you know, was interested in Often I would work with the project with two or three people, and that's really what, it, what I like most. We were able to screen at the University of Guelph where this happened. Oh. So the current Dean of Biology and the Provost of the University um, invited us to screen the film there. And um, at that time, they read an official apology to Anne, and they announced that they were establishing a scholarship in Anne's name. So the Dr. Anne Innistag Scholarship for Summer Research um, has been established and, and $8,000 a year will go to a female biology student to help with her summer field work. Um, so that was, that was wonderful. But one, one, one woman in the audience stood up and she said, I feel so ripped off. I was a student here in the 70s and I went to Africa as a kid, or as a 20-something year old, and I know that if I had had you as a professor, Anne, it would have been different for me because I wanted to do what you did and I couldn't do it, and I wish I had you as a professor. So when you think of that, um, and that's just one woman, and Anne's just one woman, and when you extrapolate the uh, effect that this sort of behavior has had, and, and how many women and other people that were discriminated against aren't allowed to follow their passions, what we've lost is a, a planet, you know? So it's, it's really gratifying to see that that behavior is changing significantly. Thank you, Alison, for making the picture because the documentary, I said picture the documentary because really you threw light on something that most of us didn't know about. You know, we see giraffes, we don't know there were, there were people that actually did research and that <laughs> Anne was the first one yes. who did a path breaking research on that. So thank you for making the film. Well, thank you for watching it. Thank and, you for talking to us. And I should actually call you Dr. Anne Innes Dag, not Anne, because <laughs> you did get your PhD. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and thank you so much for uh, talking to us. Well, thank you for um, being so patient. If you missed any of our shows, you can watch them on our website. Join us next week when we'll have another new conversation. Until then, goodbye.